Hi, Peter Murphy here. Thank you for joining us for our 14th virtual reading. We can't wait to see you in person, but until then, we are happy to see you on Zoom. I'd like to thank my Murphy writing colleagues, Stephanie Colley and Taylor Coyle, with the geniuses and the all of the hard work behind this and all our other activities. Um, tonight's reader is Yusef Komanyaka. We're thrilled that Yusef will be with us and we'll be seeing and hearing from him in just a moment. If you missed any of our previous virtual readings or would like to re-experience them, go to the Murphy Writing YouTube page. Stephanie will post a link there so you can see it. And um, you can bookmark that and watch those other readings at your leisure. And uh, Yusuf's reading tonight will also be posted there um, sometime early this week. Um, also, I'd like to encourage you to check out our daily writing prompts on Canvas. Each morning, Monday to Friday, you'll find a witty quote and a prompt to write prose or poetry or some kind of hybrid. And then you can go back and mind the previous ones if you're new to it. Go to murphywriting.com to register. It's free. And you can post what you write and uh, get feedback on that. Also, we have two write-ins each week on Monday at 4 p.m. and Wednesdays at 7 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. Come and write with us and you'll be surprised how much you get done in the 45 minutes that we do it. And I also want to announce we just opened registration for a new one-day all-genre writing program, the Midsummer Writing Getaway, that I will lead on Saturday, July 11th. We'll discuss a few poems, a piece of fiction, nonfiction, then I'll send you off with an assignment to write. You'll also have a chance to share what you wrote in a Zoom breakout room. I know that sounds strange, but it does work. And uh, you get some feedback on that. And uh, we're trying something new. We wanted to make this as inclusive as possible. So we're going to offer a sliding fee scale for this program. Pay what you can between $5 and $95 program. $5 and $95, right? So everybody should be able to join us. Go to murphywriting.com for details. Next Friday night at 7 p.m. Eastern Time, we'll be hosting three Atlantic City writers, Laurel, El Vintage, Crisp, Joel Diaz-Porter, and Mike Nee. So join us next week to hear some local talent. We're ready to get started. Um, so here's how this works if you're new to Zoom. You're all muted, but you can uh, show your reaction on the bottom there, the reaction of your Zoom screen. You can go like that and you can clap, or you can put a thumbs up, um, or you can just do it the traditional way. And uh, that'll work for you. Um, when we invited Yusef to read three or four weeks ago, the United States was a different country. But since the killing of George Floyd and the protests against police, not police brutality, but murders, we're all aware and working to bring e attention and awareness to get rid of racism, to eliminate it. Racism is America's most challenging issue. And uh, several weeks ago, very few of us had ever heard of Juneteenth. And today, in this very short time, it's so important, July, June 19th, and it's also a holiday, a paid holiday, going to be um, declared by states and by businesses. So with this in mind, we're particularly pleased to have Yusuf reading tonight. Yusuf Kamenyaka's books of poetry include Neon Vernacular, which he won the 1994 Pulitzer Prize for Poetry, Taboo, War Horses, The Emperor of Water Clocks, and many others. His plays, performances, art, and libretto have been performed nationally and include Wakanda's Dream, Saturnalia, Testimony and Gilgamesh, sorry, Gilgamesh, a verse play. He's the recipient of numerous honors and awards, including the Ruth Lilly Poetry Prize and fellowships from the Fine Arts Center in Provincetown, the Louisiana Arts Council, the National Endowment for the Arts, and others. He teaches at New York University, and something you may not know if you have Netflix, you can see Yusuf um, on the OA. It's a Netflix program, season one, episode two. It's a surprise, and it's just a wonderful, wonderful appearance. And he reads the poem, you'll love it. With this in mind, please welcome Yusuf Kamenyaka. Hello. Um, it's good to be here. It's great. I'm going to start with a poem entitled, A Visit to Inner Sanctum. A poet stands on the steps of the Greek cathedral, wondering if he has been a coward in hard times. He traveled east, north, south, in seven directions of the west. When he first arrived on the other side of the sea, before he fell into the flung open arms of a long romance, the lemon trees were in bloom. After a year, Poised on the rift of 
a purple haze. He forgot all the questions he brought with him. Couldn't he see the tear gas drifting over Ohio as flower children dance to Jefferson Airplane? Will he ever write a sonnet dedicated to the memory of four girls dynamited and a Birmingham church standing in the cathedral again in the midst of what first calibrated his tongue, gold icons and hidden jaguars etched into the high beams. He remembers an emanation almost forgotten. He can't stop counting dead heroes who lived in his head, solitaire refrains that kept him alive in the country of clouds. Underneath the granite floor where he stands loom the stone buttresses of an ancient temple when he was a boy with his head bowed close to the scarred floor he could hear voices rising from below their old lingua franca binding with his how could he forget outside the institute of national memory he toasts the gods hiding between stanzas, the girl he left behind for enemy soldiers to rough up and frighten. She never stopped waiting for him, even after she lost herself in booze. Now he faces a rusty iron gate. Did she know someday he'd answer a lot? Did she know someday he'd question a life till he held on a bone at a dull green door of an ice house where they stole their first kiss to have laughed beside another sweetheart in a distant land is to have betrayed the soil of dispossession hidden under his fingernails. Suppose he had pursued other smaller passions, singing of night dew. The dead ones kept him almost earnest, tangoing with wives of despots, entranced by stolen light in his eyes and hair. He never wanted to believe a pinch of salt for a pinch of sugar is how the scales are banished. I'm just going to find myself through a number of poems not promising to surprise myself. Blue, blue dementia. In the days when a man could hold a swarm of words inside his belly, nestled against his spleen, spleen singing. In the days of night riders, when life tongue to read to blues and sorrow song call out of the deep night, another man done gone, another man done gone. In the days when one could lose oneself all up inside love that way and then moan on the bone till the gods cried out in someone's sleep. Today, already I've seen three dark-skinned men discussing the weather with demons and angels, gazing up at the clouds and squinting down into iron grates along the fast streaks of luminous encounters. I double-check my reflection in plate glass and wonder 
Am I passing another Lucky Thomason, a Marin Brown cornered by a blue dementia? Another dark-skinned man who woke up dreaming one morning and then walked out of himself dreaming? Did this one dare to step on a crack in a sidewalk, to turn a midnight corner and never come back home? Or did he try to stare down a look that shoved a blade into his heart? I mean, I know something about night riders and cat guy. Yeah, honey, I know something about talking with ghosts. Okay, um, a slightly more recent poem. My good hand plays God. My thumb and index finger frame a zero, then an eight sleeping on its side. And I say, Leonardo, show me how the miraculous scapula moves like a toned wing, half fused, barely unstuck, and alive and dares to lift off. Floating rib, boomerang flat, if it comes back or not, I don't have the stomach for doubt and vivisection, reshaping flesh, muscle, and tone into a portrait or a mock-up of a machine glimpse on the edge of destiny. A daydreaming 500 years early. What if born out of wet law, a silky coral under over his face, Leonardo brush light under skin of oils, science and art. I could stand like X-Man moving towards nighttime, feet parted, ready to do some one-handed magic, singing Judas's old plea. My left hand holds up a sketch showing a way. Good hand and bad hand, circle half broken. Let there be a truth, embrace the fall. The whole contraption of gore and math just here as I go over the blueprint, hand raising the brain to hire order, working in the dark, step for step, over to temple, and I draw a cross down my chest. In the land of Cork King, a drowned kingdom rises at daybreak, and we keep treasuring on. A silhouette rides the rope swing tied to a spruce limb. The loudest come in the marsh. Look at the sinkholes, the slope brokenness, a twinned rainbow straddling the rocks. See how forgiven, how nature, how brave nature is. She drags us through teeming reads and turns day inside out, getting up under blame, gazing at the horizon as a throaty sparrow calls the raft home. A wavering landscape is of a one foot hole. Are we moving? This old story behind stories turns an epic season, a tangle of roses moved by 
night soil, the boar, Congo snake, and earthworm eat into pig weed. The middle ground is a flotilla of stars, a peacock carousel and ferris wheel spinning in the water as vines unstitch the leech work of salt, thick mud sewn up like bodies falling into a ditch, blooming, about to erupt, water lily and spider fern. I see the tip of a purple mountain, a sweet one. If it weren't for your late April kisses, I would have turned around days ago. Turner's great tussle with water. As you can see, he first mastered light and shadow. Faces moving between grass and stone. The beast wading to the ark. And then the decline of the Carthaginian empire before capturing volcanic reds. But one day while walking in windy rain on the Thames, he felt he was descending the hemp ladder into the galley of a ship, down into the swollen belly of the beast with a curse hook and a bell and bucket and to whimper and howl and to piss and shit. He saw winds hurl, sailed the mass pole as a crewman wrestled slaves dead and half dead into a darkened whirlpool. There it was groaning. Then the water was stabbed and brushed till voluminous and the bloody sharks were on their way. But you're right, yes, there's still light crossing the divide, seeping round corners of the thick golden frame. Islands. This poem is dedicated to the memory of um, Dara Walcott, Islands. An island is one great eye gazing out, a beckoning lighthouse, searchlight, a wishbone compass, a counterweight to the stars. When it comes to Look out and point of view. A figure stands on a rocky ledge, peering out towards an archipelago of glass on the mainland. A seagull's wings touching the tip of a high wave out to where the brain may stumble. But when a mind climbs down from its high craggy lookout, you know it is truly a stubborn thing. It has to leaf through pages of dust and light, through pre-memory and folklore, remembering fires roared down there till they pushed up through the seafloor and plumes of ash covered the dead, shaken awake, worlds away, and silence filled up with centuries of waiting. Sea urchin, turtle and crab came with earthly know-how, and one bird arrived with a sprig in his beak before everything clouded with cries. A millennium of small depths now topsoil and seasons of blossoms and a single seed. Light edge along salt-crusted stones across a cataract of blue water and lost sailors' parrots spoke of sirens. 
the last words of men buried at sea. Someone could stand here, contemplating the future, leafing through torn pages of St. Augustine, of prophecies by fishermen, translating spur and folly down to Tabra. The dreamy-eyed boy still in the man. The girl in the woman, a sunny forecast behind today, but tomorrow's beyond words. To behold a bitter water is to know pig iron in mother wit. Whoever this figure is, he will soon return to dancing through the aroma of Jagger's log, ginger, lily, bolinvillea, between chants and strains struck till gourds rally the hill in air, and the church steeple birds fly sweet darkness home. Whoever this friend or lover is, he intones redemptive harmonies. To lie down the remembrance is to know each of us is a prodigal son or daughter, looking out beyond land and sky, the chemical and metaphysical beyond falling and turning water wheels in the colossal brain of damnable gods, a eureka held up to the sun's blinding eye, born to gaze into fire. After conquering frontiers, the mind comes back to rest, stretching out over the white sand. Okay. O to the oud. I love the sound of the oud, you know. Gourd shape muse. Let me start over. <clears throat> Ode to the Oud. Gourd shape muse. With wind in the mulberry, tell me everything you're made of. Little desert boat of Ra. I've blown box of bed and doves, pecking pomegranate seeds out of the air. You're the poet's persona, his double, in the high priest's third chamber. Each strain, a litany of stars over the Sahara, pear shaped traveler, strong but so light, is there a wishbone holding you together? I wish. I knew how to open you up with an eagle's feather or a pick whittled from buffalo horn, singing alive the dust of Nubia, rose wood seasoned long ago. I wish I could close your twelve mouths with kisses. Tongues strung in a row. I wish I could open every sound in you. I envy one blessed to master himself by rocking you in his lonely arms. Little ship of sorrow, bend your voice till the names of heroes and courtesans, birds and animals, prayers and love songs swarm from your belly. Okay, fortress. Now I began with these two hands held before me as blessing and weapon. Blackbirds and fierce flight and instruments of touch and consolation. This sign means stop. 
And this one, of course, means come forth, friend. I draw a circle in the red iron clay around my feet where no spirit, no evil spirit dares to find me. One's hands held at this angle of a boy's head or a roof over a sanctuary. I am a green horn in my fortress in the woods with my right eye pressed to a knot hole. I can see a buzz in the persimmon tree, its ripe letting go, a tiny white cross in each seed. A girl's fiery jump rope strikes the ground. I see the back door of that house close to the slow creek where a drunken, angry man stumbles across the threshold every Friday. I see forgiveness, unbearable twilight, and these two big hands know too much about nail and hammer, plank and uneasy sky, hewn, stoned and mortar is another world. And sometimes a tall gate comes first. Then huge wooden barrels of grain, flour, salt meat, and quick lime before 20 crossbows and four towers. I'll just read a couple of other poem, poems. Is that fine? Okay. Okay. When eyes are on me. Yes, when eyes are on me. I am a scrappy old line who's wandered into a Christian square, quavering the centuries of forged bells. The cobblestones make my feet ache. I walk big shouldered, my hand raised proudly. I smell the blood of a king. The citizens can only see a minotaur in a maze. I know more than line should know. My roar goes back to the Serengeti, to when a savanna was craggy eyes, but now it frightens only pigeons from a city stoop. They believe they know my brains contours and grammar. Don't ask me how I know the sign engraved on a sundial, the secret icons behind a gaze. I wish their crimes hadn't followed me here. I can hear their applause in the dusty citadel. I know what it took to master the serpent and wheel, the crossbow a spider tap, once a leopard beside a stone gate. I am a riddle to be unraveled. I am not, and I am. When their eyes are on me, I become whatever's judged badly. I circle the park. Hunger shapes my keen sense of smell a lifetime ahead. They will follow my paw prints till they are lost in snow at dusk. If I walk in circles, I hide from my shadow. They plot stars to know where to find me. I am a prodigal bird perched on the peak of a god house. I have a message for fate, the sunlight has shown me 
the guns and their beautiful sons are deadly. One last poem. Let's see here. <laughs> I'm sorry to hold you in trance there. Unlike, unlikely claims. This is my house. My sweat is in the mortar and hewn wood. This garden of garlic blooms is mine too, said last night, last night's pale ghost. I know every crack where cold and light try to sneak in and where the past tongues and grooves the future. I own every rusty nail. This fence wasn't here when hobnail boots marched us into the night. I remember all the cat eye marbles would roll to this corner of the kitchen. This tree limb my uncle cut to make a witching rod. Here's the mark an anniversary candle left on the counter, said the ghost, slowly fingering the deep burn like an old wound. Now dirt bikes, tr trails, crisscross the apple grove my father planted. The goat tied beside the back gate belongs to my progeny of beautiful goats. You sold the mental rights under of a feet, but the bird we hear singing overhead in a Yiddish accent owns the morning. Those roses are mine because I've walked through far. Go and tell your drinking buddies and psychoanalysts your neighbor has risen from the ashes. I wonder if I should tell you about the love letters hidden behind the door jam. This house still stands among my lavender flowers. Tell your inheritance to think of me when they smile up at the sky. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you. Thank you. That was wonderful. And uh, thank you all for listening and watching tonight. If you're new to Murphy Writing, why don't you go to murphywriting.com and sign up for our email list so we can keep you appraised of uh, this as well as our other programs. We hope to see you next Friday night for uh, local Atlantic City writers, L'Oreal El Vintage Crisp, Joel Diaz Porter, and Mike Knees. And I uh, hope to see you again Monday on our write-in. Now, usually at this point when people are leaving, we encourage them to uh, put some money in our past the hat fund, but we're not doing that these days. Instead, we're offering, inviting you to contribute to other organizations. This week, we're encouraging you to contribute to Mighty Writers. It's a nonprofit dedicated to teaching kids to write. Plus, during this time of um, the pandemic, they're also giving out sandwiches as well as books. They have programs around Philadelphia and Camden, and they're soon opening um, one in Atlantic City. So if you go to the chat, you'll see the link there that Stephanie just posted. And who knows, if you got some money, you can drop a few bucks in on your way out. Thank you again for joining us, Yusuf. We're just honored to have you.
Take care of yourselves. uh, Be safe, everybody. We'll see you again soon. I hope in person, but on Zoom. Bye.